The wiffle balls that we use are very small, so it works hand-eye coordination um, and, and kind of pitch recognition in a sense, like you have to, and you have to adjust on the fly. And you're not allowed to use your hands because with this rebel rack, if you swing and you let go and you kind of detach your elbows from your torso and you're not maintaining your angles, the rebel rack's going to fall. Okay, so it encourages the player to make sure that they're using their torso, they're using their core, and that they're having those muscles activated in their swing, and that they're limiting the use of their hands. Okay, so the wiffle ball attachment, the way that we try and cue this, so there's different ways, some of them we've actually gotten from the players, is uh, get your back shoulder to the pitcher, which is the one that I use a lot. One of our players the other day said, you know, I try and think that I'm catching the ball with my back hand, um, because the, it's almost on the same level as the black attachment. Okay, good. And we're not looking so much about where this ball is going, um, but with a lot of younger players, you probably want them to try and pull the ball because it encourages them that they're anticipating the pitch in front of the plate. They're not letting the ball get too deep. Um, but when you first start out, because it can be a challenging drill, you want to just make sure that these guys are getting, that they're, that they're hitting the ball. That's the number one thing, is that you want to make sure that they're hitting it with some kind of authority and that they're, these are, you're doing a great job, Nico that you want to make sure that you're, that you're rotating because that's the purpose of the drill. Hey coach, he seems to be doing a great job of making the adjustment on different pitch locations. Where does that come from? Is that? So he's, uh, he's making this adjustment because he's in a good athletic position. So he's actually working into his, he's working from his load or he's working from his preset into his load and he is maintaining his body position, his tilt as he gets over the plate. So he's maintaining his angles. He's not, he's not just going with his hands, which would, you know, he's, he would immediately drop the rubber rack if he was doing that. He's maintaining a, his, his position over the plate and he's turning. The coach, you mentioned, sorry, can you get back to impact? Talking about angles, right? So ideally, we're, if you get to impact, we're creating that 90 degree angle with our spine and our body and our bat. So this is forcing the athlete to make that adjustment without necessarily telling them to hit. Yeah, definitely. So you're allowing uh, the athlete to self-organize in a sense. So you don't, have to, you don't have to cue everything in the drill, right? Because there's so many things that are going on. And just with this one thing, you're, you're obviously focusing on rotation, but your body position, your tilt, your rotational acceleration, you know, your, even your vertical angle, technically you're working that in this drill. So there's a lot of things that are going on. And it's, you're, the athlete's getting a, an outcome. And either they can, their brain can process and they can make adjustments just by what, what they see as their outcome.